and we're gonna start taking out this um, air air intake stuff so we can just get some of this out of the way so yeah there are two thermostats on this engine or a thermostat and a water control valve I think they call it that intake thing came out really easy and then you just pop the two clips and you take out this side of the air filter thing with the air filter and then you unplug I think that's got to be the mass air mass airflow sensor you unplug that and these here there's kind of a trick you kind of have to squeeze them together or push on them with a screwdriver you know one side at a time and get them to pop through and the wire comes out so and then you would loosen this we'll loosen this clamp and there's another where is it somewhere down there sorry I don't know why my flash isn't on right now. There it is. Right there's another probably 10 millimeter and this should come out. So because I need to reuse this coolant, I have a clean uh, bin. This is one of my kids Lego bins and uh, when I'm done with it, I'll clean it, uh, dry it, give it back to them. But here's my setup. Uh, I just made a, made a funnel to go back into this bottle because I definitely want to save the coolant. We probably don't have to drain all of it, but I got to get it below the level of, uh, you can see this stuff with the air box removed. So right in there, that like housing has to come off. So there's some, one guy online that takes that off with the hoses connected and says it's quicker and it might be, but I'm thinking to get everything lined up and leak free, it's probably better to just take the hoses off because who knows if I'll have to scrape a gasket um, off of there. But anyway, so there's like a thermostat. There's one of them behind there. And then this pipe, this uh, metal pipe here that comes around to here has to come off. And somewhere there's a, oh, right there. That hose there, there's a little outlet and there's another one thermostat or water control valve there so it looks like we got some kind of oil leak or something going on there um i don't think this car has ever wow i don't think this car has ever had the pcv valve done so i'm gonna try to locate that and see if that's something that might be causing that oil to push out there while this is draining i'm gonna look up the location of the PCV valve and probably begin pulling off some of those hoses. You can see it's like a, a nice pink color. Um, the Amsoil coolant is yellow, um, but that, uh, that coolant boost has that pink uh, tinge to it. Yeah, do yourself a favor and pop your plastic engine cover off. There was three uh, Allen bolts, but there's your PCV valve and I mean this oil is everywhere so uh, hopefully it didn't you know cause any permanent damage but uh, so anyway we'll we'll go ahead and get that out of there pop the spring clamp and unscrew it and we got to go to the parts store anyway to grab the thermostats hey guys so just a reminder to change your PCV valve so this is a, the 2011 Altima we're working on four cylinder and I did loosen that with a uh, I think it's supposed to be a 19 millimeter but I don't have one of those available so I was able to just uh, it w actually wasn't that tight so I was able to get it loose and then I'm just backing it out let's see how bad it is I'm pretty sure this is original um, Know which you can all see but yeah, it's pretty pretty grimed up and there's oil still kind of sounds like it's moving but I I know that's not a absolute test so yeah it's definitely something to think about changing if it's accessible on your vehicle and it's probably what has caused uh, much if not all of this you know, oil leakage. All 
All right, I stuck that old PCV valve back in there just for the time being. Obviously gonna have to replace this hose. Um, so if they don't have the exact part, I'll just use some, you know, generic uh, hose, a uh, vacuum hose or, or oil. You know, probably I've got some uh, transmission cooler line that stands up to oil and everything. So I'll probably use some of that. And so, yeah, we did put our coolant uh, in the jug. Got almost a gallon, so that's good. And so I'm going to start, um, I guess, pulling these hoses off and trying to get out that uh, the thermostat in there. And then I want to say there's a, a bracket maybe holding that metal pipe. I'm not going to take all that loose. I believe that you can get that metal pipe to pop free. Uh, where is it? It's hard to see. I got some harsh shadows from the sun here, but uh, yeah, that thing should pop out of there and then give us access. Hey guys, just my comments, but this is not really a fun or pleasurable uh, experience for me. But uh, it is what it is. We got into it. Um, so anyway, this pipe right here, um, there's a bolt on the bottom. And you can see it's got an O-ring there. And there's also, remember, this bolt here holding it in. So, you know, you're getting these bolts out. And uh, so you wiggle and you really work and pry gently. And you finally get this thing to come out. And so... Then you can access um, down here these these bolts I took out, and now that's the lower. Uh, oh, we're losing some coolant there, but there's no way to collect that clean. It's dripping on the dirty engine, so anyway, we'll lose some. But uh, so anyway, we'll pull this off, and one of the either the thermostat or water control valve is in this this thing here. And there are other videos showing this stuff, like my purpose was not to do a tutorial on this, but uh, it just came about as part of this uh, coolant change. And uh, so, but yeah, if you're pretty handy, you can, you can do this, but, you know, I wouldn't say this is for, you know, somebody who's never worked on a car before. That's the bolt we're going for. And it's, I think, again, I could be wrong, but which other one could it be? So we get another take on it. Thanks, man. That's helpful. Alright guys, so I did manage to do it this way, where I pulled everything off. Um, it was tough getting to that bottom bolt down there, but I finally did. Uh, just take your time, and, and uh, I'll have to pull that black gasket off of there. And I've already pulled out the uh, thermostat. I don't know what, how much you can see there. And same thing down there. Um, you got that water pipe and then the that's where the thermostat goes. So there's the old ones and I've already the uh, rubbers came off and then here is the new ones that I just picked up. These got good ratings online. This is 20 bucks. Oh made in Israel. Yeah that's cool. So, you've got, uh, let's see, that's probably instructions. want to make sure we put them in the right way, of course. But there's your two and your gasket, and they've already got the rubber uh, things on there. That one is, there's one that's 203, there you go, and one that's 180, I believe. And uh, they are different sizes I think that one says 180 yep so there you go but uh 
So I'll be trying to get those in. All right, so this is the thermostat that goes up here. And the correct way is that this goes inside the housing. So I'm trying to do this with all the hoses on. And I've already got my new gasket in there. You also want to have, see that hole right there? Sometimes they have a jiggle pin. The other one does, the other thermostat does, but it, you want that hole to be upright so that uh, any air in the system is gonna go through there. And so, hopefully this is gonna work. Of course I dropped it, but anyway, you get the idea. You gotta work that thing in there. All right, haven't had much time to work, but I did uh, the kids wanted to clean up the battery because it was pretty gnarly looking. So anyway, we did that. We threw the SeaTech uh, on it just to top it off and everything. It's in float mode right now. So I don't know if you can tell mode number seven. It's hard to see, but basically it's floating at 13.6 fully charged. And uh, it'll go over to step eight, I think, after a week or ten days, which is just, it uh, cuts in and out, only comes on as needed. But I wanted to show you guys, I got that back in without disconnecting the hoses. So I'll have to move this clamp back over. And uh, there's a clamp there I moved and uh, plug up that sensor. But anyway, I used the gasket that came with the AutoZone kit, but I gotta say, I was tempted to reuse this gasket because one it was stuck to the engine though it came off really easy all in one piece but it appears to be some some type of painted or coated metal um, so I didn't know if I could reuse it but anyway I went ahead and used the one that came with it and I think I got those all tightened up so I'm going to jump into uh, where is it that's the pipe uh, right down there just throwing that thermostat in and the spring side goes towards the engine and uh, and you make sure you put your rubber seal it's already assembled on the the auto zone uh, variety that rubber seals already on there so there you go this is the which one is this one eighty there it is so yeah and you can pay attention when you take them out the bigger one is uh this one down here the longer one so if yours has a hole or a jiggle pin that little thing there call it a jiggle pin um make sure you put that you know upright i think because the air if there was any air you would want it to you know come out since I have done several transmission cooler installs, I have various uh, sizes of transmission oil cooler line. This is 5 16 It's actually not in there. This is 3 8 Bought that on Amazon, so I would have plenty. And then these always come with the 11 seconds size that I have here. Uh, there it is somewhere anyway where is it 11 30 seconds and I usually use the 3 8 because it fits better um, this stuff is really tight getting it over the end of the cooler these are really good coolers by the way I did a video on uh, it's called my transmission uh, trifecta for longevity something like that and uh, just be sure to subscribe and search for that video if that's something you're interested in. The reason I'm showing you that is because rather than go to the parts store and buy a hose for this PCV valve, you know, obviously this is oil rated hose. So I'm just going to use a piece of it to go from there to the PCV. That is still the old PCV valve. I actually have a new one coming. So I took that one out, cleaned it with solvent and I reinstalled it for now but I do have a new one coming uh, from Rock Auto and uh, also have one coming each for the 03 Accord V6 
and the 07 Pilot. They're actually the same part, but a lot cheaper on Rock Auto. Definitely took some oil to get that hose on, but you know, could just be because it's new. You could also use a 3 8 and it would probably fit easier, but being as this would be a vacuum leak, if it wasn't sealed, I wanted it to be nice and tight, so we'll get that new PCV valve here uh, soon and, and install that. All right, and while we got the air box out, we looked inside and the air filter is kind of uh, dirty, so we're going to go ahead and change it out. And we got a AutoZone has the STP brand, and so we got the premium one. It costs more, but it's got the like synthetic media. So Amsoil used to make really good air filters that were the synthetic media, and then they quit because you literally never had to buy another one. So I guess they weren't really profitable for them, but. Uh, Hopefully this is a good one. Thanks. Hey guys, just something to note about this filter. It's the STP Premium PSA 10349. I got it at AutoZone for like 15 bucks. So it's, I mean, it's in there now, but it, at first, when you first get it, it, it looks like it's too big. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe it is a little bigger than the factory element. Obviously that one we took out was not factory. It looked like the cheap replacement, but I just worked with it. I pushed it down in, you know, started here and I, I took my time and it looks like it's pretty much in there now because the way I was gonna, it didn't want to seal up. It wanted to push uh, right here and I thought, you know, it's gonna bend this uh, rubber seal and suck dirt in and that's something you don't want so anyway I, I worked with it and it looks like it's in there now so just take your time make sure you don't have any dirt uh, paths for dirt to leak in all right you can see that beautiful brand new air filter in there and just take your time getting everything back um, we got this back in it's kind of funny to wiggle it in and then put your clips back in, reconnect your mass airflow meter, tighten that clamp on the air tubing. And now we gotta reinstall our little, uh, there's a uh, air duct here. But yeah, we're getting to the point where we're gonna be ready to get the battery all reconnected. Um, that thing's broken, so I have duct tape on it. Some AMSOIL spray grease on the terminals unless you've got some uh, battery protector grease or something. And uh, we'll be ready to go ahead and refill the cooling system uh, here in a little bit. Just got to put this little uh, air, air duct in. All right, so we're going to pull vacuum on here one more time. Sorry about the noise. going to yet we pulled the vacuum we're trying to see if the system is holding <laughs> down to minus 25 I can hear air but it's right here at my connections I think we're good it's about 24 and a half. So it's slowly moving. I was concerned about that metal pipe where it goes in the engine. Let me show you right there. Because uh, there's just O-ring and I oiled it and stuff and put it back in. And 
uh, that gap there that's how it was when I took it out so anyway I hope everything's good with that All right. Are we gonna suck it now? Let me take a look. Yeah, it's at 24. I'm gonna pull a. I'm gonna pull the vacuum one more time. Filling, there it goes. I think we filled the, uh, huh. Let me see. Is there any way to get it down in there anymore? Whoops. Can you tip it back up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hold that right there because I can see it down in the water. I'm going to try to suck a little more. So we're getting some air, but I'm hoping by this point we, uh, we filled the voids in the engine and, and this is just the radiator part so all right it's definitely slowed down now I think we're just about there let it yeah like I said, hopefully we got the <coughs> voids back in the engine. Bless you, Phil. And, all right, I'm going to cut it. So what I'll do now is pop off my air. What we'll do is we'll lift this out, and then, Gabe, I'm going to undo. Whoop, I'm going to let it back down in the jug. So open this again. And that relieves that so it can drain the hose. And then I'll be topping it up manually. And uh, like I said, hopefully the engine block and all those voids are full. And now we'll just be topping up a little bit in the radiator. Just going to top out. See there was a little, little bit left in the jug that we couldn't uh, suck out of there. And so we're going to Oh, thank you, buddy. Thanks for thinking of me. That was great. That shows All right. So when we drain this coolant out of the engine, uh, you know, even into a clean pan, there's some particulate matter in there, so I made I cut this bottle and using a coffee filter and we're just uh, takes a little extra time but I didn't feel right uh, pouring this you know dirt back into the radiator so just little particulates but uh, anyway warning people this is not coffee yeah not coffee here but using a coffee filter all right we're gonna restart it Oh yeah, immediately it looked like it sucked down, or maybe it actually blew out a little bit. I got it a little too full, but anyway, and we're letting this drip. See, you can see I caught some particulate there, but anyway, we're letting the clean stuff drip into the overflow, and yeah, I better put this cap on, because it's moving around. Yeah, maybe it's going to push some air out, but... 
Hopefully with the vacuum tool, it won't have a ton of air in there, but... So anyway, we'll try to let this thing warm up. Hopefully these thermostats open up and everything's good. And we'll go for a test drive. Okay, so after some idling here in the driveway, the bottom radiator hose did get hot, which is a huge praise because before that was something I noticed is the bottom hose would be ice cold. So let's go for a test drive. Well, here we are on a little longer test drive and I've driven it at least as long as I did the other time when it uh, got up to hot and the gauge is staying steady. I'm running the AC even to provide extra uh, heat load on the engine though it's not a hot day, but uh, given the fact that that hose, that lower hose was, was hot and before it was cold, tells me that the coolant is now flowing. And so what we'll do, we'll take it back home and we'll let it cool off and then recheck the fluid level because it may uh, suck some down out of the overflow at that point. But Lord willing, looks like uh, looks like this might be a success with changing those thermostats. I am very happy with this. The test drive that temp gauge did not move. Took it up on the highway a little bit. What I'm going to do now is I just want to kick on the air. We had the air on, but I want to do this to see if the engine fans are running. I think we checked this before. Yep. Yeah, we got engine fans running, so I think those thermostats fixed it, and that AMSOIL coolant and coolant boost should be a good thing for, uh, I think, five years, 150000 All right, guys, so Merry Christmas. I thought for this time of year I would share something that uh, you might find interesting to learn about Santa Claus. Um, so this is a legend. This is church tradition. Um, we don't know 100% that it's true, but uh, the story goes that St. Nicholas um, at the Council of Nicaea, this was AD 325, that uh, what was up for debate or discussion was the Arian heresy and this guy Arius said that Jesus isn't God Jesus was a created being he was the first being created by God and you know that strikes at the heart of who God is as triune Father Son Holy Spirit and it's also um, the gospel because if Jesus isn't God in the flesh then how could he be a fitting sacrifice for our sins on the cross that's why he came to earth so um but yeah legend has it that saint nicholas was listening to arius uh say these things and these disparaging things about our lord jesus christ and that he got up and went over and socked him right in the face and so um you know we don't know if it's you know supposedly it's because he was so um you know, zealous for God's glory and uh, the things that the guy was saying about Christ, he just couldn't take it. So, uh, you know, that's the story. And uh, so, Saint Nicholas, we know he uh, he did give gifts to the poor kids in his village. So, uh, that's what I wanted to share about Christmas. So, um, oh, and the scriptures that support uh, who Jesus is, there are many. I mean, John one in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Um, without Him, not anything was made that was made. Colossians 1 also and Hebrews 1 also tell us that Jesus was not created. Jesus is actually the Creator. He actually created all things and He upholds all things by the Word of His power. He holds creation together and um, so yeah, I pray that this season you would consider the truths of Scripture and who Jesus is and why He came. 
and see your need for a savior. He came to save sinners. So thanks guys. Did you want to say something? Mm -hmm. Alright guys, so you can get all this stuff, minus the distilled water, you can grab that at your local store. But you can grab this, the propylene glycol coolant, the coolant boost, and you can grab, there's a couple other coolants that are 50-50 mixes, but this is the low-tox biodegradable one. And uh, here's my info. I am Amzoil dealer number 1463115. And there's my website, number one synthetic. Just type it in. There'll be a link down in the first comment. But you can also go to amzoil.com. And if you do check out, if you do end up uh, getting something, uh, put in my dealer number if you don't mind. 146-3115 Michael Troll and uh, I would appreciate it but yeah go and, and put your car in your make model and engine and you'll see exactly what we've got for it well guys I think this is a success after driving the car and what I'm going to do is top this thing out again and as it cools down it's probably going to pull pull some more in but uh, I think with that cooling system refill tool we got everything um we got the air out of the engine i do believe but uh it's always possible and i was very happy there were no leaks uh no leaks that i can tell so far and that pipe right there that i was concerned about i don't know if you can see it right there there doesn't appear to be any leak there so thanking the lord for his grace in that, guys. Have a great Christmas.